hey, hey, it's Shop Talk, baby. This is the show where it's okay to be here. We're talking from Yale to jail and from the church house to the pit house. Nothing's excluded on Shop Talk. So if you don't have a phone, I suggest you borrow one. Call in and voice your opinion live every Saturday morning from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Yeah, that's right. 10 a.m. to 12 noon. Don't forget to Shop Talk with your girl because right here, oh, we can see real. Good morning, good morning, good morning to my lovely listeners out there. This is Shop Talk with Mel. If this is your first time tuning in, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you will. You can catch us on all platforms and your favorite podcast, all at Shop Talk with Mel. Today's topic is learned behaviors. Um, my guest today is a parent. Let, let me backtrack a little bit. Um, there was a, uh, I guess, post. I will say post, not even a video, because I saw the news coverage as well. There was a post that went out, and it's on different um, media platforms, where it was a parent who, I, I don't want to say the wrong thing, saw, no, asked their child, how was the school, you know, how was school today? And she speaks to her child. I'm sure that you go ahead and do this lovely thing. Talk to her, her children. And um, there's a play coming out. Well, the play is, or was, I can say now, at the moment, it was, at, well, you know, when the post came out, it was, or yeah, it was a hairspray. And for those of you who are familiar with the um, play hairspray, you know that it's racially motivated. Um, but what it was was the roles that were the roles posted, Danielle. Okay, yes. Danielle. Let, let, let's yeah. give it up for uh, today's guest, the supportive mom that knows what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to do this. I got to be the corn ball, the corn ball, but I love it. <laughs> Like, let me, let me pair with these sound effects. You see, I was playing with all the other stuff. Right, that's cute. <laughs> Due to COVID, um, we can't be in the studio, but trust and believe I do miss that. So we're doing Zoom for the listeners out there. And if you uh, check later on, you know, on YouTube, it'll be uploaded and you'll be able to see exactly, um, exactly who, you know, I'm talking to. All right, so, Danielle, I want you to, Tell me exactly what happened with this. Oh, let me finish this part of it. Um, so it was 10 roles that was for, didn't it say uh, white? No, yes. no, no. Yeah, 10, 10 for white. Um, 10 white roles and three black roles. And we're talking about in the play production. So R-O-L-E-S, not R-O-L-A-O-S. You know, since we finished Thanksgiving. Well, just to backtrack a little bit, we knew that this musical was coming about. If anyone knows my daughter, Zaniah, she is very eccentric. <laughs> we'll say, we'll, we'll say. She, is, she's a, she is a young lady of the arts. She draws, she likes to do cosplay. She, you know, she, it, she, those are the types of things that she likes. So when she found out the school was going to do a musical, she was very excited. And they just had not been told what the musical was going to be. So they found out that the musical was going to be Hairspray, which is one of her and I favorite musicals. Like we love musicals. That's what we do. One of my favorite musicals in the whole wide world is Grease. So we was, um, I was sitting in the driveway waiting on them to get off the bus. And she gets off the bus and my usual, hey guys, how was school today? Oh, it's fine. We're walking into the house or whatever. And I said, you know, well, what happens? Cause I never just take their fine. You know, I, I need more details. Did you take a test? Did you, you know, what went on today? And so I said, well, didn't you try out for the musical? She said, no. She said, we didn't have trials today, but we picked up the script. And I can't go out for the part that I want to. And I said, well, why not? And she said, because I'm black. And I said, what? <laughs> 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 I said, what? 
she said, because I'm black. I said, what do you mean you're black? I said, did, so, did someone say that to you? And she said, no, but this paper does. And so she handed me the casting list for the play and well, musical, and it lists the individual roles. Um, there were 13 of them. And it says that at the end of each description of the character, it said, this must be played by white actor. This must be played by white actress. This must be played by white performer. And the entire first page was, we need white kids, basically, for <laughs> lack of a better term. And so then when you got to the back page, there were like three roles for black kids. And I said to her, I said, clearly this is an oversight. I said, someone just printed this off of the internet. They didn't look at the details. I'll address it with the school in the morning. I go to the school in the morning. I meet what I met at the front office with who I thought was an administrator. Um, I'm finding out she was not, I found out later that she was not. She, the principal was not available for me to speak to. So I asked to leave a message to have her call me. Um, the lady that I thought that was the administrator, she said, well, can I just speak on your behalf? And I said, no. I said, I think I need to speak to the principal. <laughs> and so when the principal called me back and I finally, cause we played phone tag a little bit and then I spoke with her. She called me with someone else in the office, I guess another administrator. And they began the conversation with explaining to me the play. And oh, I knew so right off. Even, oh, so that, they were already prepared. Listen, I would so right away I was like, this is not gonna go. Well. <laughs> this is not gonna go well. And so she finished and she said, Are you there? Because I just was quiet. I didn't say anything. She said, Are she said, she said, Do you understand that? <laughs> and I said, before I came to the school, I am very well versed in hairspray. I have saw the play. I have read the play. I have watched the remake on television. I'm very familiar with hairspray. She said, oh, I didn't know that. Well, she had never asked. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so, but I said, I said, I'm asking you to see it for these, from these kids' perspective. You're, this is a predominantly minority enrolled school. You chose a play that excludes the majority of your kids. She said, oh no, we're not going to exclude them. They can be in the ensemble. Well, well what is the ambus ensemble? Well, those are extras. They can yeah, be I know the extras. people in the back singing, might, they might have a singer role. They can be the, or spin. Well, that's what she said. They can be the extras. I said, well, well, <laughs> Listen, I was speechless. I'm not going to lie. I was so taken aback. I was like, well, well, what do you mean? I said, there are no major roles for them. And she said, well, the play doesn't call for that. I said, I understand that. I said, but again, I'm asking you, this play that you chose, you know, we ha I had my daughter and her kids were crying the night before they were really upset because it was like you know they had built them up teachers had them auditioning in class singing the songs like these kids thought that they had a chance to go out for whatever role it is they wanted to and so all she said well what are you asking me I said I'm asking you to cast the play based on ability and not race and she said well that just does that doesn't work for the integrity of the play we have to maintain the integrity of the play and so I told her that that's not, not the integrity of the people. I said, that's <laughs> not acceptable, though, in this environment. And I just kept having conversations with her back and forth, trying to see, trying to get her to see this thing. I didn't want hairspray canceled. What my daughter and I wanted to do was sit down with them. You know, everyone keeps talking about the integrity of this play. You would rather protect the integrity of something that doesn't live and breathe over the mental and emotional health of or something that does. Somebody need to make that make sense to me. <laughs> and so I was, you know, we were going to suggest, OK, we'll cast the play on ability and let one group wear white shirts, another should wear black shirts. 
or you can be innovative and you can do Nike versus Converse. You can do Adidas bands versus Converse. You could do, you know, hip hop versus rock and roll. Like the play is not about race. The underlying meaning of the play is about differences, accepting people for who they are and everyone coming together. The school made it about race. Okay, let me let me interject here. How about flip the roles? Well, I, we were going to suggest that too, but uh, flipping the roles is definitely not an option. <laughs> Why? Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. No, the non-melanated cannot be the minority. The majority. <laughs> they cannot. No, not be that the is minor, that is you. not an option. That that. But I never even got as far to discuss options with her. Because at one point in the conversation, she said to me, well, what role does she want? We can make an exception. And I said, that's unfair. I said, this is not about my daughter getting a role in your play. This is about every little minority baby in that school having an, op having an opportunity to try out based on their ability. I don't want a role for her. She can earn the role. Like my daughter can sing for real. She can earn that role. But, you know, I don't know if she sings the best in the school or as good as someone else, but let her try out. If she gets it, she gets it. If she don't, it wasn't her time and her turn. But you're not even allowing us to get to that point. And so once they offered deny the role, I was like, OK, this is not going anywhere. These people are going to stay on this thing. And I said to her, I said, respectfully, I need you to know that I am going to continue to escalate this. And she said, well, that's your right. Like she was, unfortunately, in this conversation, she was very indignant. And just because she was soft-spoken does not mean she was not offensive. It was clear that she had no intentions on even truly reevaluating their choice or given the option to do the play a different way or choose something else. So they already had made their decision. They had already made their decision. And she was back and in her listen, teacher. These kids didn't have a choice in the play. This is the play that they were told that they were doing. Even now, the children still thought that they had an opportunity to try out for every role. She basically said to me, though, because I told her, I said, well, I want you to know I have instructed my daughter and her friends to try out for whatever role it is that they want. And you're going to have to tell them they can't have a role because they black. And she said, well, they can try out. We would never stop anyone from trying out. I said, but you're going to cast according to this script to the cast request, right? She said, yes. I said, so you would allow them to try out knowing that they didn't have an opportunity to get the part? She said, well, we have to main maintain the integrity of the play. Now, let, let me back up a little bit. Uh, well, I don't know, it's Valley, Valley Christian now. Yes. Um, but before that, it was Youngstown Christian. And I know before, and I'm not speaking for the school, I did reach out did not get a return call at all. Okay. So, and you yeah, said, they're over it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah they're over it's it. all over. So it's, I mean, it's all over mm -hmm. and people need to look at things like that. Now, this was my question. When, um, when I uh, read the post, I looked, I was like, oh, wow, these are influential young adults who are getting ready to run our country. Yep. They're getting ready to take those places. So me being drama girl, <laughs> being in the drama club and everything, citrus as you call it. Um, right. but I love the arts as well. That was my major performing arts was it. Okay. And knowing like, once you get, um, once you get out a little bit more and once you get out into the real world, when there is a casting call, they do have what they're looking for. They'll put the age and they'll put African-American mm -hmm. woman, blah, 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 da, 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 da. Right. You know, between the ages of maybe 36 and 46 or something like that. And that's what you see on the casting calls. Right. As a child, I don't think they're ready for that. And honestly, the wording was just ignorant to be in a school. You know what I mean? You know, 
10 whites, three blacks, like I'm going to need for you to actually, you know, say like Caucasian, female, you know what I mean? Because it could, it doesn't have to stop just with, like you said, they were making it um, racial, but the play to me was racially motivated anyway, the hairspray it period. Is. It is. You know what it I mean? is. And it shows it the is. difference. And I can get that. And I'm wondering because the school was predominantly white, that's where I was getting to prior to. It was predominantly white because mine went there as well. And mm -hmm. then it's now it's predominantly black. It's making me wonder with all the whole like Black Lives Matter, are non melanated individuals getting upset? Yes. And when they are the teachers and we look at teachers, we look at them believing that they have integrity, believing mm -hmm. that they have our children's best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. But look at that daycare. I can't even remember where it was. We covered that story where the uh, non-melanated were being served. In a day Did you see that in a daycare? Because that one went to where they had the non-melanated children being served first and our children being served last. No, I didn't see that. Oh, oh I'll, have to, I'll, I'll have to bring that up. And oh my God. You pay because this is a private school. Right. So you pay for the air quotes for my listening audience, um, the better education. Yes. You know, so we were groomed to believe, you know, so you're paying for that and they get their, they receive their monies, but they're not getting that. They're being retrain so we're at home building them up and i'm not saying for that school i i, I want to clear clear this up i'm not saying for valley christian that that's what's happening but you have to look at the integrity of the individuals and what are you what are, what is your intent and that what they say with law you're guilty what is your intent the intent right. determines your guilt right you know right so it's like right. so what are you doing when you you we build them up at home and then at the school you're tearing them down and the reason i say that is because you said that she didn't she couldn't audition and she said because she was black now you're at home building yours up and then yes. one piece of paper in black and white no pun intended <laughs> is saying you you're not good enough right well, that's exactly what I tried to explain to the principal, because there was a portion of the conversation where I did not get ignorant, but I was very passionate. And I told her, I said, listen, these aren't your kids. These are our kids. These are our inner city kids that we are sending to you. And you are responsible for their mental, emotional health, as well as their education. These kids, y'all kids moved to Boardman and Canfield and Austin town. That's Those why the, the suburbs for the listening down. audience. Yeah, I said that. I said that is why the school is now majority has a majority minority enrollment, because the parents that were able to take the extra initiative and go the extra mile that viewed a faith based education over a more convention, you know, con rec conventional uh, education. We gave you our children to take care of. How dare you set them aside like that? So there was a portion of the conversation and she said to me, well, I understand your position, but there's position. no other way to do <laughs> I understand your position. But again, they keep repeating, kept repeating to me, they have to maintain the integrity of this play. Now, let me, let me share this with you that the new, the little part that the news didn't include. Hairspray, whenever you do a musical, there's a licensing agency. The licensing ag agency for Hairspray the Play has a passage, a letter per se, that is included, that they give to you to include in your programs in the event you do choose to cast it, not according to race. And for lack of a better term, the passage says to you, we are about inclusion. There, none of these characters have to be specific to race. So if you are viewing a production and it does not look like what it is that you are used to seeing, focus on the major point of the play instead of what your eyes are seeing. Why would they even include that if it wasn't an option to do it a different way? 
the licensing agency for the play. It says that. So Valley chose to do it like this. Mm-hmm. And they weren't open to any other options. And now let me just say this. I want I saw the interview from the news. I I feel bad for Mr. Pecchia. He looked off center because he didn't know about this. The principal I spoke to never escalated it to him. He, the first time he heard about it was when the news was when Megan from the news showed up. He thought that she was there to do an interview about the buses. He never <laughs> even knew. Blind so side. she took it upon herself to be the judge, the jury, and the executor. I asked her specifically in that interview, and what 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 else could we do? She She was unwavering. She never even said to me, well, there's another step you can go. I can see if the president can have a conversation with you. He was completely oblivious. And as we all know, once the camera is on you and the people under you have already set a precedent, in the face of the community, you have to be unified front. So I still haven't had an opportunity to have a conversation with him to see if there have been other options or not. So I don't want to just blanketly villainize Valley Christian. I don't want to do that. This is a principal who made a decision, who took a stance all alone on her own. I appreciate you um, saying that. I I like Pecky too, I do. And you know what's sad? What's sad? Yes, in front of the camera, you do have to look like is unified. I think she was wrong because she blindsided him. Yes. She should have told him, listen, this is what's going on. Even if you have to like run up the hallway or whatever, like, listen, I need to talk to you right now as a parent. So she stood behind her teacher, which is a good thing when you have their back, but you have to say, wait a second. And, And I'm not telling her what to do. Let me speak with her. And let's see her point. And then I'll meet with you. And then we'll all meet together. Right. Because you have to hear all sides. You have to hear all sides. And what it did look like, I'm going to be honest. And well, if you read the comments, I'll have to send them to you. It looks like, oh, okay, here we go back with this again. We still have to, you know, even with the uh, BLM movement and just, the direction and what we are trying to go. And we're saying, hey, listen, can we please be treated equal? That she is actually making that school look like, no, no, no. Right. No, this is what we're doing. And making the play look segregated, honestly. Right. let's Let's be real. And to me, you are trying to dim the lights of our youth. That's our future. These are, these are the people that's going to eventually be taking care of her. Do you really want to dim their light? Well, I asked her, I said, what message are you sending to these kids? Mm -hmm. And I, and I told her, I said, and I'm not talking about just the minority kids. I'm talking to every child in that school. What message are you sending? You are teaching our melanated children that it's okay to be set aside depending on the circumstance. And you are teaching your non-melanated children that it's okay to set them aside. And like you said, Mel, when you go out into the real world, and this is what I explained to my daughter. I said, if this was college, I wouldn't have a complaint. If this was Easy Street Productions or Youngstown Playhouse, I wouldn't have a complaint. This is your school. You spend more time at school than you do at home. The minute you feel like you don't have a voice or you a second class citizen in your school, there's a problem. It definitely is. The phone number here is 619-902-2287, 619-902-2287. If you want in on this conversation, we are live. Now, when you say that, um, and us for the, you know, for the people that you're joining in, you, when you say that we are teaching the non-melanated that it is okay, that they are superior. Mm-hmm. And that was the way of the world pr- 
prior BLM. Yes. You know what I mean? And even before, and it's like, why? Is it because it's beginning to be an equal playing field that you don't want it? And when you deal with teachers, I'm just going to be honest. Teachers were held to a higher standard. Yes. It's very different now. And when I say higher standard, higher standard, I looked, I looked at um, teachers as, you know, at a higher standard. And they were my role models when I was a child. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why are you trying to hinder me, hinder me from excelling? And even, you know, some people look at it like, well, it's just a play. Well, not for people like me who love the arts. It's more than that. And what it exhibits is it's not your reality, but not again reality TV, but we ain't gonna go there. <laughs> <laughs> you get to pretend. Why can't I pretend to be this person? Look at the um Annie. They just did Annie. Right. Annie was not white. She was not. And Let's it was not the say best that to person. her though. Yeah. She was amazing. It was the best person for the role. Yes. She, it was the best person. And it's like, come on. Why are we still here? And I just feel like there's some fear. There's some fear yeah. that we're rising. And that's an issue. I, I, I just, I, I, I can't understand why the principal actually sided with her teacher. She should not have done that. Came in, tried to double team you. So that was an issue for me, you know, it's like, oh, okay. So you guys um, had your conversation prior to, and this is what you're going to do. And it was like, okay, this is, this is the plan. We get ready to jump her, not physically, but emotionally. And I guess they thought mentally, but they didn't know Danny. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I was going, oh, y'all thought I didn't have some sense about myself. Okay. <laughs> But well, and and let me just clarify this. Mm -hmm. The other lady that was in the interview with her, I don't know what her role is in a school. I know what her name is, but I have chosen not to specifically state people's names. Um, Just just because, again, this was not about making anyone look bad. This was not about making the school look bad. But I, I, my husband and I talked about it and I said to him like this. When I go to the chop house over at Avalon, if somebody brought a bag of McDonald's french fries and hamburgers out to me, I would be livid mm-hmm. and still charge me Avalon chop house prices. Our kids don't go to that school for free. It is time for us as parents to start getting our money's worth, to start holding them accountable for what it is they are responsible to do. And it is not just to teach these kids reading, writing, math, and arith- arithmetic. Well, half I mean, of them aren't doing that. It, well, I mean, well, yes. <laughs> but, yeah, yes, but it's time for us to start getting our money's worth. These private schools around here get a lot of money for our children to be put into their schools. And how how am I your bread and butter and I'm still a second class citizen? I don't under that makes no sense. But it's like that because there is no accountability. When kids come home, it's like I told you, when kids come home and you say, how was school today? And they say, fine, you go, okay. And you get to cooking dinner, you get to balancing your budget, paying bills, whatever it is. We have got to start asking more questions. No. I have, you're right. I have a question. What was the backlash or were, was there any backlash for your daughter? Well, for you going up there, uh, speaking out on your behalf. Yes. Yes. She has lost some friends and one girl even made the comment to her, you know, you got to go. Right. And she was like, what? And she was like, you know, you got to go. Right. There's no place for you here. And Zanaya just was like, yeah, okay. Because she her mother's child. Like, it's all words and it's not a problem until it ain't a problem, until it is a problem, you know? But even, I felt bad for her because even to have to go through that, you know, like, they just don't, the school missed the mark. And these are children. I don't blame them because for what they see, you went on the news and they canceled our play. 
which they didn't cancel the play. They're just choosing a different one, you know? So, you know, for, for the kids, all they see is what was taken up for them. They don't see what was given to them. From now on, every little child that comes in that school after the fact will be taken into consideration when they choose a musical. Their population would be choosing, will be taken into consideration before they choose a musical. And the musical is a small part of it because for me, the people who are in charge are still the people in charge. If they can do something like this with a musical, what else is going unnoticed? Because that type of mentality to think that it's okay to set any child aside, I, like you said, you need to think about it, the intent of a thing. It, that's interesting to me. I'm telling you, the intent. Like, what are you really doing that we don't see? You smile in our face, but how do you really feel? And well, she, I, I'll be honest. I really felt like she was saying, I mean, because there were some other things said during the conversation, and I really felt like she was saying, y'all always in the limelight. They can sit down this time. I really felt like that that's what she was saying. Really? See? See? That, see? Well, like the sports and everything else is like, that's why I brought up, there's a means to my madness. That's why I brought up by it being, I gave the history how it was predominantly white now is predominantly black and it's like wait a minute what about ours that's how i feel that yeah. that's just, i'm just going that and let me say this the views of mel is not the views of the guest on shop talk with me i gotta clear <laughs> nor that danielle up. nor danielle exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean yeah but i'm just like what i said to my daughter was you know when she came home i said listen i said when rosa park said she wasn't going to the back of that bus no more. There was already black folks back there. Everybody ain't going to be sick and tired when you get sick and tired. As long as you are pure of heart and your intention is in the right place, you always stand up for what you believe. You're going to lose some folk along the way, but them is the people you're supposed to lose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just hate that she had to experience that because she really, like, she didn't have to be on that interview when the and for the record i didn't reach out to the news they reached out to me because i told you what <laughs> i told you <laughs> okay because a friend of mine sent them and sent them a copy of the script Ooh. i mean the casting list if they didn't think that there was an issue with it they'd hit delete like they do i'm i'm sorry i'm, I'm sure a lot of things i didn't call the news the news called me. Just like I called you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. So I need mean, people, you know, and unfortunately on the WKBM website, there was a young lady who recently ran for the Board of Education and she immediately jumped on there and started attacking me and it's not racist. And, blah, blah, blah. and first of all, I never said it was racist. What I said was it was culturally insensitive be due to the population of that school. So mm -hmm. let's be clear on that. I never said it was racist, but she immediately jumped in and started attacking me. Well, I'm also an individual who believe in there's a difference between our house and in-house. And sweetheart, you are an African-American lady just like me. We are not about to sit here on WKBN and give these non-melanated individuals an audience and go back and forth. I'm not going to do that with you. So I politely just said to her, you're entitled to your opinion. That being different is what makes us great. But it just further attested to me how just as a African-American race, we are we ourselves are so divided so they don't have a problem this you know what i'm saying treating us treating us like this because we treat each other like this child that's uh, and i'm just saying that sound like john mcporter uh for the readers out there he's the author of uh woke racism that's what that sound like yeah anyway y'all right. gotta, gotta have to check that out we're we gonna talk about him with his thoughts so you write in-house outhouse and I want to put this out here. Danielle also ran for um, Youngstown City School Board, had some kinks in the way, um, some illnesses where you weren't able to push, you know, like you wanted to. But that's who we need on our board. We need people that are 
fighting for the in the racial injustices that are going on because something like this and I'm glad your child I'm glad you asked those questions and she came forth and said you know well I'm not because I'm black you know like come on she sees it she sees it and a lot of people aren't talking to their children because we're out working and it's like okay we got to get this money up okay school was good good just as long as the school doesn't call me then all is well and we don't know what's being taught or what's being said. And this is high school. So let's look at what's being delivered and what the intentions are. We don't know because nobody's actually holding them accountable. Nobody's asking those questions. Let me say it the right way. Asking the questions, holding the adults accountable and saying, hey, listen, you got to look at this. This is not okay. And what's really odd to me is that she went to bat and felt like it was okay. That's, that's a major issue. So your leader of the school felt that that was okay. That is my main thing. Like, how are we not having, forget this play, forget this play. The principal of the school felt like it was okay. That is a big thing. I don't understand how the following day that office was not filled with parents because I'm sure some parents just were not aware but at the minute they were how was that school not bombarded with parents demanding answers but you know what Mel they don't see a problem with it and let me just add this other little detail what they say or, are, to me or was, are they afraid well I think they're afraid I do because the um the retaliation is real. It is real. I have had several people reach out to me since then and say that they are going to pray for me and my daughter because the retaliation is real. I even had a parent reach out to me and say that she had an interview when she complained about something. She had an interview with the school right before the end of the school year. And she was asked not to reapply and to not return because she raised the concern about something. And she told me, she said, I guarantee you around March, April, they're going to invite you in for a meeting and they're going to ask you not to come back next year. You gonna have to omarosa them. Take the <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> Take the Listen. In the office, honey. Listen, I, I said, well, that will be very unfortunate because my daughter is doing very well there and she has made some really good friends. Like I said, she lost some along the way, but that's OK. They just weren't for us, you know, <laughs> you know, but they they wanted to add this detail to me during the conversation. They said the young lady who chose the play is black. And I said to them, I need you to explain to me why that makes a difference. Go ahead, Amber. <laughs> I, was gonna, I was gonna throw out apathy, parental apathy, and maybe that's why parents were not in the office complaining. And then as far as why that makes a difference, it doesn't make a difference. And that's because black people are still viewed as a collective as opposed to other minority groups and particularly white people who are viewed as individuals. And so if you have one black spoke person to say, that's not racist, that's okay. They think that, okay, well, this one black person is speaking for the entire race. And I, a lot of black people are indoctrinated to believe that as well. Um, so it, like you said, it's not just it's, it's it's ourselves too right so i think yeah that whole like oh i'm black so i can represent my entire race that's what that is that's what they think right that's what they think yes yeah but now mind you this young lady is it is, is just that i think she had she graduated from school maybe two or three years ago and so what i said to the principal i said no disrespect to her but She's a child herself still. She hasn't had enough life experiences to understand the gravity of this. She is not in charge of the population of an entire school because first of all, she's not on the payroll, she's a volunteer. 
Okay. She's a volunteer. I said, you are, you have a responsibility that she doesn't, you can't put this off on her because they, if that's what they did, they immediately deflected it to, well, a black lady chose it. Right. And I think it's unfair to think that every black person is supposed to have like a master's degree in systemic racism in the history of the United States of America. You know what I'm saying? And I think it's a, it is a, another way to deflect and not take accountability. Um, when you try to put the bur- burden on the token, right. <laughs> the job, you know, right, right, right. Well, it, and that's what I said. Even in that moment, I stood up for her. I was pissed off like how you gonna put it on her (laughs) that young lady like you know she she was like well we've done this several times before we've never had a problem I said (laughs) I told my husband I didn't say it to her I said the first lynching wasn't the last lynching did the last one make it right I mean I don't understand like what is that we did it before so that make it okay I don't understand that none of this made sense to me. And I think just the overall message of how do you choose to protect the integrity of something non-living over something that is? Mm -hmm. I don't understand that for everyone going, it has to be for the play. It has to be for the play. No, it doesn't. They could have been trailblazers and innovators and pulled this play off in a way that did not have anything to do with race because they're doing it all over the country i understand that that's how it's originally written but again even from the licensing agency they encourage you to pull it off however it is you need to to make people feel included Mm -hmm. and i understand that that's what the end of the play does but i said to her before we even get to the first practice you are making people feel excluded so how does that work they they had no response though. So I know they didn't. I know they didn't. But just like um, Amber was saying, and like I was saying early on, it's it's like you, like you said with the school, you, you're shocked that nobody came up to the school in outrage, not violence, right? Outrage. Not a, right, right, right. And it's like, wait a second. But just like Amber said. It, we're looked at as like you're just now you're the spokesperson okay she handled it for mine and I don't want my child to get f's or my child to be mistreated because of her voice so I'm not going to say anything because she already said it which is not okay and let me share this for the people that don't aren't really into like black history or whatever when you hear what is it um silence is violence do y'all remember that saying mm-hmm And Mm -hmm. I I said, you have people who are so upset with the, you know, okay, well, they're um, having a movement. They're out there. They're uh, protesting. Oh, boy. And people look at protests as violence. Silence is violence is what they say. I'm using air quotes. Okay. So when somebody is silent, you need to watch. Mm -hmm. You need to watch. And I'm not saying just us because they might be doing some work over on the side not anything harmful for the school, but they might be doing some things that what is, uh, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Right. And, and, go ahead. <laughs> I'm a huge believer in moving in silence. So I definitely, <laughs> res- you know, I definitely keep my eyes out for the silent ones. Just because somebody ain't saying nothing don't mean they don't have an opinion, don't mean they're not making moves, don't, don't mean they're not orchestrating things behind the scenes. So I completely Absolutely. agree with that. Completely. <laughs> so Absolutely. me me saying that is saying that I commend you for letting them know, Danielle, what you were doing. Mm -hmm. You know, you let them know you're like, and I'm not going to stop here. So you gave them a forewarning. I hate that they didn't give their leader a forewarning. I know. I hate that Mr. Becky looked like that. I I, (laughs) I hate that. I do. And that's the only reason why I'm using his name, because I want to be clear. Mr. Becky didn't know. He did not know. He had no clue. He didn't know. He was caught off guard. 
It's like they said, hey, Peggy, you turn around, click, and took the picture. You know what I mean? Like he had no warning. He did not know. Now, is that to say that he would have had a different stance? I don't know. But I think people should have, at least, you know, he should have at least been given a fair opportunity to give a deliberated response. You know what I mean? He should have been in the, he should have been in the office. So you have somebody else in there and he should have been in the, been included as well. Um, I, I just feel bad because like I said, I like Pecchia and Mike Pecchia. Let, let me let me be right. Senior, oh, senior, senior, <laughs> senior, 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 right. <laughs> and, and that's horrible. So your team isn't cohesive. Right. And you know, right. It, it's that's that's kind of foul. So I'm sure they're gonna have a meeting, but they didn't gonna let us know what's going on because like no. I said, I reached out, but they didn't um no call, no show. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I get it because I want to hear their viewpoint. And like I was sharing, as far as having um, you know, casting calls and going on casting calls, you know what's there and what what role are you going out for? Nobody prevents you from going out for the role. I, me personally, if they wanted to do it that way, and if it were me and this is what we're doing, I'm not going to put white, black, let everybody, boom, go out for the role. Who's the best person? And you know in your head, like what you plan on casting, but if somebody blows it out the water, you'd be like, oh, we need to rethink this. So the entire team is like, oh, wait a minute. Let's bring this back in. We're going to have a meeting. She really did that. So we're going to have to cast her as being this person. We don't have to do black face or white face. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it could have been done a little differently. I am sorry that you guys, especially your daughter, but you say your daughter is like you, so I know she's going to be okay. That's right. <laughs> is having to deal with that. And it sounds like there's parent conversation at home that came to school to say, you know, you have to go, right? That sounds like a parent conversation. That's what that sounds like. Again, that, well, let me just say this too. It just, <laughs> I have prepared her for a lot of things. For her, you know, her birth, I told you, you know, you're my Facebook friend. So, you know, her birthday was yesterday. And so I took her and four of her friends out and just having conversations and just dialoguing with them. She has a good support system around her. She has friends in that school that are going to watch her back and that, you know, are keeping her calm too and making sure she doesn't give, engage in anything that's going to or deflect from the good, well, yeah, or <laughs> deflect from the good work it is that she did. Like she gets an a girl because at 14, she didn't have to take that on. Mommy could have handled that by herself. And she said, no, no, this affects me. I want to be part of this. So well, I'm- it totally affects her because you said the yeah. conversation, you asked what was wrong and she saw it. At 14, yes. she saw it. Yes. So yes. it needs to be addressed. So if they're seeing it at the age of 14 and usually that's ninth grade. Right. You'll see it. Will it get worse? Well, Will and let's change? be clear. This wasn't just for high school. They gave this to seventh graders. Yeah, this play is for seventh through 12th. Can you imagine seventh graders? Like a lot of kids, really. I, I talked to a few different parents and they said, well, I'll ask them. And when they asked the kid, the kids say, well, no, I'm not going, I, I'm not going to be in a musical anymore. There aren't any parts for me. They just didn't say it like my daughter said it. But kids that were planning on it, once they read it, just immediately threw the casting script in the trash. Like, oh, okay, this one not for me. That's awful. That is awful for the, you know how much, well, you are in the arts, you know how much courage it takes to even say, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to try out. And then before you even get to that point, you read on the piece of paper, you're just automatically not good enough because you was born brown. And I asked her, I said, so what about the biracial babies? What do they get to do? I said, are we going to go to the one drop rule? You know, we going back to that 1%. You we know go it. back to the 1%. What do the biracial babies do? What do the Latino babies do? What do they do? Where, Asian. where's their where 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 are their where's their partner? Yeah, it's just poor taste. Very poor and taste. She said, 
they can be extras. That's the part that got me. <laughs> That's the part that got me. From so I'm not good enough for a lead role. From the principal. You from the principal. <laughs> and you know, in my yeah. mind, I already got the ensemble. Okay, if you're not a good singer, so you won't be that four people over there singing on the side Listen. of the stage. You Listen. know that with the, with the microphones. If, if Mr. Holes knew that ensemble was being chosen based upon race, he would be somewhere to discuss it. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or I'm extra in ensemble. Way. So what you, you, you're you actually, you just walk past, get a familiar face, you just walk past, like you walking down the street, you spin around off the stage, like, what? Yeah. What's an extra? Yeah. Yeah. You, you take the broom, am, am I the broom pusher? You, <laughs> you know that far, a couple of hands. Well, you know. and I think if you if you're if you've done any research on like the history of like racism in Hollywood, it's really interesting because I feel like it does kind of harken back to those days. Um, and I think it's great that now we're in a period of time where we are focusing on us telling our own stories instead of asking other people to tell our stories. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's in very poor taste and then yeah it's very borderline and just like it seemed like it like you said when you start bringing up the biracial kids and the latino kids and all these other children it, it's just like it wasn't really thought out and i do think well, you know, i truly thought it was just an oversight I, I i never imagined that we would get here i really did because when i first went to the school when i brought it to the I'll say ex-administrator, because she used to be, she's not anymore. When I brought it to her attention, she said, no way. I said, oh, yes. And she said, can I see it? And I said, well, you got, like, she wanted me to give her my copy. And I said, no, there's more right behind you. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so she got a copy and she began to read it. And her exact face was, <laughs> she was like, I can't believe this. We would never. Like the initial reaction was one of pure shock and was in complete agreement with me that it was completely unacceptable and that it was an oversight and they would never and it completely went against their values. All for me to find out that she walked in the lunchroom later and said to the kids, we're not racist, we're just trying to put on a musical. And so certain parts require a certain thing. Okay. <laughs> It was your daughter in the cafeteria at that time? Yes, she was. Yes, she was. Let, let me let me share this really fast. My daughter did an interview at a school. And then the next day they said, um, no student is to speak to media. The next day, they made sure she was in the auditorium. That And that's how you do it blanketly. But here's the thing. Right. I said, they don't, they don't know. Your nana is media. Your mother is media. Yes, you can you can interview with whoever you want to, as long as you're speaking truth. So they don't want to get that out. That's the right. thing. You don't want right. to get it out, but then you want to choose that child because they told the truth and you want to bother that child because we had some issues after that. Okay. We, we okay. had some issues after that. And it's like, oh, really? Okay. Even, look, even as to not graduate with the class. Oh yeah, oh yeah. School board. Oh, well, the school board. Listen, it was like, why didn't? Why wasn't she here? We had her diploma stop playing because an English teacher, and I'll put it out there, said that she didn't turn in her paper, which was false. I know she turned it in, and then another paper that, and I read it, and I'm, I know it wasn't a zero on that. So that's what we're doing. Okay, and I told her, I said, that's okay. Because you didn't need to go to that graduation anyway. And my mom wanted to see what she missed. She was like, I need to see why God chose her not to be with the graduating right. class. Well, your right. principal drunk up there calling the wrong mayor, the, the old mayor. It was a right. big much. So I would have been upset anyway. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But right. just like you said, you got yours the chosen one and what they need to do honestly they need to be happy that your child is there because once she excelled they could say oh she graduated from here 
She a grade ahead. She 14 in the 10th grade. I she ain't no dummy. Right. Okay. Go ahead, girl. She in the 10th. And yeah. I, I just, I just feel like, you know, we have to watch what's being taught. We need to get involved. And just because you don't get a call, which is so crazy how the narrative has changed, because it's like, okay, the only time that you get a call from a teacher is when their day is not going well because your child did not conform. Right. Right. That's when you get the call. Right. Where's the call to say, hey, they did a great job. Where's the call to say, or the paper to say, oh, um, here's a note, they did good. Where's the stars? Remember the gold stars and the silver stars? Right. Oh, no, no, no. To my star. no, 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 no. No, no, no. Only the negative is accentuated now. And that's a problem. So parents yeah. need to go ahead and change the narrative back mm -hmm. and say, hey, I didn't get a star because before it was the star. Let me show you the star, the gold star I have. Mm -hmm. Flip it back to where it was and be like, okay, well, how come you didn't get a star? So clearly, blah, 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 blah. Then you can address your child. But why are we giving attention to the negative? We're giving so much attention to the negative that it's taking over and that's gonna be an issue. And I'm gonna tell you why it's gonna be an issue for the future because they're not gonna be able to cope. You right. have poor coping skills. And right. honestly, if it's constantly negative, 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 we're yelling and we're like, I need you to behave. I need you to do this and I need you to do that. And the teacher's yelling, what are we doing? Absolutely. We're dimming their light, dimming their light, yes. dimming their light. Yes. The yes. Way, and then you get out to the real yes. world and it's going to be like, oh, okay, well, my mom yelled at me, my teacher, these people that I held to a higher standard that I thought really cared and loved me, they mm -hmm. yelled at me. And then we wonder, well, why is she in an abusive relationship? Well, this is what she got. It's a large That's behavior. What she got. It's love to her. It's yes. normal. It has, she needs it in order to function. And we, we, we got to wake up. We have to yeah. wake up. We need more parents like you, Danielle. If there's something wrong, oh, if there's an issue, let's address it. Address it yes. head on. Yes. Because you didn't yes. just post no. it. You no. went in and like, let's have a meeting. Let's talk about yeah. this diplomatically. Two. Two meetings. Oh, you had two, two meetings. Days. Two. To no avail. Two meetings to no avail. And I truly believe had I ever been, had I been given the option to have the conversation with Mr. Pecchia, we wouldn't have got here. I truly believe that. Like my intention was not to go on news and view Valley in a negative light. That was never my intention. My intention was just to get a fair shot at being a part of what is the biggest production of the school, because I'm here to tell you, my children interviewed for Valley very late in the year. Like, I think there was maybe three weeks before school started. And they used the musical as the lure. They talked about Zanai and how she was in choir and stuff like that. Oh, you could be in the musical. You could th These children, she never thought that she was just going to have to be someone standing on the side next to the fire hydrant. <laughs> you know, like they, they used it as a selling point to come to that school. And so you do that, you, I felt like, I said, you set them up to knock them down. Why are teachers, like she had a teacher ask her to sing a song for the play in the classroom for one of the leading roles that she wanted to be. Why would a teacher ask her to do that if she never had a chance of being in a play? Because that teacher probably had no idea. Exactly. But that's what I was trying to complain, convey to the principal. Like, no one thought this was going to be like this, not even your staff. No mm -hmm. one thought that. She just was, when I tell you she was indignant and unwavering, and see, there's a certain group of people that think, because you speak like this, that it makes whatever comes out of your mouth correct. It doesn't. <laughs> to me, that's insulting my intelligence. It is. Well, I am finding the, the most disturbing thing to this is, you know, talking to other parents, they say, well, that's just how it is at Valley. That's, well, that's just how they do it. Apathy, apathetic. Surprise, surprises me not. They've done it before. I've had several parents reach out to me like, and I'm going, people, what do you mean? 
What do you mean? That that is not okay. I do not accept that. I reject that. No, it is not just how they do things. It's how they've been allowed to do things. There you go. And I don't, I don't waste yeah, yeah, money. You got good skin. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking like. <laughs> Listen, it's it's my hum hum my hum hum. It's the hum hum uh washcloth. You got to do it once a week. You get all the dance together. But thank you, thank you, thank you for it. I'm just like, no, y'all. We you would not go pay sixty thousand dollars and let somebody give you a lemon. You wouldn't do that, y'all. This school is not free. We are paying. Whether it, you sign in the check from Air Choice is still your money. You get to choose where the state send that check. It's still your money. We are okay. paying this school. Air Choice for the listening audience and the out of towners. Um, that is, if your school is in academic failure in your area, they'll pay for you to go. You know, you could choose another school and they'll pay for you to go. It used to be five thousand a student. A year. That's what it used to be. And then they broke it up where you would get paid. They would get paid at the beginning of the year and then January, the second right. check. And what I've noticed, and I'm not saying this for Valley Christian, but I'm just saying for the, um, you know, the um, scholarships that they have out there available. What I notice is some of those schools that aren't in your district, once they get paid per child, and it's not just the private school, because even like if it was a school in the suburb, they still get paid for taking your child. Right. I noticed that they suspend ours when, after January. They're done. They kicked out the school, but they already got that second payment. But I'm just putting that out there. You guys do your own research, okay? Because wow. I did that a while ago. That's what was going on. And that was back in 2016, 17. So wow. you guys, uh, and 14, 14. There you go. So you guys check, um, check that out. Y'all check that out and see what's really going on. And you are absolutely right, Danielle. That is money's being paid for your for your student, yeah, for your scholar. And it's like, what are you teaching? And do I really want to put my child in this environment that I thought was air quotes for a listening audience? Um, good school, better education. And it's like, okay, you're here, but what are they actually teaching you? There was another. Um, there was another teacher that just got fired, I want to say about a month ago. And she, you know, she was going for Trump and what he was saying and what he believed and she ended up getting terminated. I want to say it was like a first, first grade class she was teaching them. And just like I was sharing, Amber, don't, don't you remember where the, um, that preschool, it cost like a thousand dollars a day and they were feeding the uh, non-melanated children first? You remember yeah, that? Yeah, I remember that. Story. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, which, what's really going on? What are we teaching our children? We have to talk to them. And yeah. what's the intent? All teachers are not bad teachers. Because no. I got, you know, there's some no. great ones. But then you got that one bad apple that will blow it. And mm-hmm. just what Danielle experienced in the office, she already made her decision. This is what I'm going to do. And I'm going to stand by my teacher. And I get that. But to me, to already have somebody there and see, I am that person. Do you have me on speaker? Because see, you need to tell me that I'm on speaker when mm-hmm. I call. Mm-hmm. Who else is in the room? Because I didn't call for them. Take right. me off speaker. Right. That, that's me. Take me off speaker. Because if you want to put me on speaker, I'm going to put you on record. Since uh-huh. we're not saying nothing. Mm-hmm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It, it's the intent. What's your right. intention? Are you upset? And again, I'll say, is it because it was predominantly white now? It's predominantly black. And you're like, uh-uh, we need our white kids up. And I say it white. You know, we need to build our white kids back up. Uh-uh, they're going down. They're, you know, they're becoming equal. And I won't say less than. I'm going to say equal. equal. It's like, oh, no, right. we're on the same playing field. Hold on. They all, re- let's be real. They already took over sports, basketball, football, golf. No, we got to have something for us. So they need to feel superior. Is that it? And this is what Mm -hmm. we're going to do. Set them aside. You're going to shine. Here you are. Or let's look at it this way. Is that your child, your niece, your best friend's daughter who wants the lead role? Okay, it's going to be for white so that she could get the role because she can't sing a lick. Yeah, (laughs) you know, I'm just talking. We're not going to have her audition. We're going to put this here. Nepotism is real. real. You, you, You know where I work. I know that thing. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes. Yeah, yeah. Gabriel Gabriel if you don't, don't practice, practice that, that is a more. Okay. You're yeah. echoing. Yeah. Group of people. You're, you're, are you on two, Amber? Are you on two speakers? Because you're echoing. No. Oh, oh, you got a cold mic then, huh? <laughs> I don't know what to do. Is it still echoing? Yeah, it's mm-hmm. echoing. But go ahead. No. You're just no. probably have to go out and come back in. But go ahead with your point. Oh, no, no I, said, I, said, I said every, every other, other group, group practices nepotism, nepotism, and I don't, I don't know, know why, why black people don't practice it more. It's, it's really just everybody does, does it. it. Um, and, and yeah, yeah I think, yeah, we, we talk, talk about equality and uh, versus, you know, being put down. I think, I think that when you're used to being privileged, when you're used to having, you know, a leg up, when it's truly an equal playing field, it can feel like you're all of a sudden disadvantaged. Okay. Mm-hmm. interesting it, inter- it, it's interesting and it's sad it's, it's sad it's, it's really sad especially sad. when you're dealing with youth I'm, that's what I'm saying seventh grade <laughs> I, I, I'm, when, I, when it first happened and you can talk to any of my to- co-workers I was after talking to that lady I was in tears at work because I don't work with a lot of people who look like me, mm-hmm. but it, it doesn't matter. We all get along very fine. But I put it to them like this. I said, the moment, I, I said, cause no one went to pick up a casting list that didn't intend on being in that play. And I need you to think about a seventh grader who was mm-hmm. at home, knew that they had to go against these eighth, ninth, 10th, 11th and 12th graders, but mm-hmm. had decided they were still going to go out for the lead role because they really wanted to do it. Mm -hmm. And the moment that baby picked up that cast list and looked at it and said, I don't even have a shot because I'm black. You can never get that moment back. You will never be able to undo whatever happened mentally, emotionally, and psychologically in that little young brown baby's mind. That is conditioning. That is conditioning. You cannot erase that moment from their minds and some of them children will never forget it and they're they're not going to they're not going to and in the back of their mind the color of their skin is going to stop them from doing something that is horrible for that's going to stop them from even trying because they've already been conditioned at an early age it can be used against me and it's okay go ahead amber And the reason why the parents were like, oh, well, that's how they do. That's how they roll. Don't surprise me, none. That is the manifestation of conditioning in parents and adults. It's like, oh, well. (laughs) We're used to it. It just happens. And that's not okay. It's not okay. It's not. And I also commend you for saying something again, because guess what? If that's stuck in your child's mind for the rest of her life, this will be stuck in your school's mind for the rest of yours. Yeah. That's it. And I think anybody that this affects everyone at the school, because it's out there and they'll remember this and they'll not listen here. And that's that saying, what it say? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Those other people, the conditioning parents that said, that's how they roll. You fail for anything. You fail for anything, but you would be surprised. I am really, I have really found out for some friends that, you know, every, every, and not that they needed to, cause I didn't do it for them, but there are parents of color that are upset. Here you are just making us look like another black angry race. You uh, one the the one girl said, "Oh, whiny parent because your kid didn't get a part, sweetie. She was offered a part. <laughs> I turned well, it that's down. What really got so, I, I turned it down so that your baby could have a chance at the part too. Like I mean, like who who takes on a stance like that and then is that shallow? The two don't even go hand in hand." But that just goes to show show the uninformed, you know, uninformed people just talking to be heard, just, you know. But you know what, but not, but not talking to be heard. You see Right, exactly, exactly. It's it's like, come on. Dave Chappelle said in his special, the one that was the controversial special, Mm -hmm. um, 
he said it in there. If people actually listen, he said, well, he didn't actually come out and say it, but he said it overall. What I took from that was black people won't stand together, right? You don't want to ruffle the feathers. And it's not that you're trying to ruffle the feathers. It's like treat us right. But you have the gay community that they, they're cohesive. This is it. And change is happening. But then you have us that are like, okay, well, I'm going to be quiet. Okay, well, I want my child to get this. So it's almost like, um, I'm about to say it. Y'all could bleep me out, whatever. Let me ding the bell. House nigga slave. <laughs> right. Okay. I look, I'm going to ding the bell for myself. Call it, you know, hey. house nigga. It's like. And you know what Jay-Z said? Still. <laughs> you, well, know, you know what I'm you know what, I mean? you know what I'm saying? Y'all saw, y'all saw the Django, the D is silent. Right. It's like, well, it's, hello, you see it. <laughs> It's See. funny you mentioned that though, Mel, because I said to her, I said, well, y'all are a Christian school. Traditionally in the play, her mother is played by a man. Are you going to allow one of the little boys to cross dress? Crickets, crickets. They See? didn't address that question. They didn't answer it. If you gonna do it, do it all. That, that's all I'm saying. If we maintain in the integrity of the play, then her mother needs to be a man that's cross dressing, right? Mm-hmm. If mm -hmm. that's what we're doing, crickets. They didn't. Mm -mm, they they didn't address that. See? So oh, so it's okay to set us aside, but it's not okay to set a member of the letter people aside. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you know what uh, I mean. And no disrespect to them. Your life is preference is your life preference. But I'm just saying from the cool, from, if you are a Christian faith-based school, then what you, what you gonna do with that? And she, she, she had nothing for that, so. Cool, see, interesting. I yeah. thank you for coming on. I truly do thank you, Danielle, for sharing your story. Oh, thank you for having me, Mel. It is very impactful. Hopefully uh, parents will actually ask the questions and not how was school and let it go. Let's dig deep. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about Let's the talk exam. About Let's talk about it. Because a yes. lot of people don't know. They don't know. And they're, you know, they're just living lives, you know, living life, trying to stay above water, keeping their head above water, that they don't realize that their children are being faced with the very issues that we try to prevent. And that's probably why we sent them to that private school. So they don't have the same experiences that we may have had when we were younger mm. and it's being taught. And I'm not saying that for Valley Christian, but I'm just saying anywhere, anywhere, ask those questions. even the non melanated parents, Absolutely. ask Absolutely. those questions because yes. it could be the opposite too. It can be the opposite. And it's like, okay, wait. And there are a lot of non-melanated people that I saw commenting on, you know, the post when it was shared that mm -hmm. had an issue, had the same issue with you. Like what? Right. And, and I believe in their heart, they really felt like, what? This is nuts because you're dealing with our youth, not adults. Right. Give it to us as fair, fair ground with us. Well, how old are you? Okay, fair ground with us as an adult because you out there in the real world, let's deal with it but impressionable scholars that will be running the world. This is what you do. We need to think twice. Um, give me some suggestions, Danielle, on how people who actually wanna do productions in their school, how they should go about it. You gave us the issue, give us a solution. What should they consider? Well, well I think that one of the major pieces of this puzzle that could have eliminated us even get, getting to this point. So, you know, how you wore down controversy is having student and parent involvement. Like I said, the, the kids didn't choose this play. This is the play that they were told that they were doing. And I think that even if the school wanted to carry it out exactly like this, we had they the school has a parent board they have those one call messages that they send out in the text messages you could have had a zoom meeting to get feedback from parents you could have had a zoom you could have passed out had the teachers give a survey out in school to the kids i mean you just you know they tell you in anything you do you have to do it specific to your audience. The audience at Valley Christian is no longer the audience that it was before. So change is imminent because change has happened. 
you know? So I think that you have to start, you know, we have to stop being so rigid in the inanimate things. People are what matter, you know? So I think that if we get back to putting ourselves in other people's shoes, because I asked her to do that, I asked her to reverse the roles and do that. But I think if we get back to more parent involvement in our schools, keeping the lines of communication open and being, you know, attentive to your audience, keep in mind who it is that is going to see this play, who it is that's going to put on the play and what message it is that you want to send from beginning to end, not just at the end. Okay. Amber, you have any solutions? Um, yeah, I was going to say that. And I feel like if they had done a survey, um, or something, and they they would have had a rebuttal. Say, okay, well, we did a survey, and we had, you know, three hundred parents respond, and they were all okay with it. And then we did, and then we did a vote, and this was the play that the students selected. You know, what I'm saying to be more uh, democratic with it. It seemed like it was kind of like an individual person's decision and preference, and their personal beliefs kind of really overshadow the beliefs of the school and the student body and the parent. And like you said, you're the actual audience. Um, so I, I agree. It would have just been, a, what is it, what is it saying? Uh, an ounce of prevention, yeah. you know, versus a pound of cure. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Exactly. I remember um, we would vote on the place. That's what I remember mm -hmm. in high school. We had it. They would put it up on the board, boom, boom, boom. And you voted one, two, three. He took it. That was the play. And mm -hmm. so we were actually able to, you know, have a say. And it was like these, we had three up there. So you had that option so that you wouldn't have, you know, somebody feeling some type of way. Okay, well, they voted on it. And when you're dealing with seventh and eighth graders, when you since you brought that up, when you're dealing with that age group, it needs to be sent home. And you have, you know what I mean? Here you go. Yep. Boom, boom, boom. And I understand that you do have, you know, you do have some that don't agree with how things should go. You have some people who feel as though like, okay, and you have that one that's like, okay, this needs to not be this way because of this. And you have the majority that says, Oh, well, this is how it's always been. So we accept it. And just like uh, a good friend of mine, Carol Bear, her mother, you'll hear me say this over and over. Her mother says, saying nothing is approval. Mm -hmm. And if you do not agree, you have to speak up. So your voice is heard. Okay. So your voice is heard, but you do have that. Like I said, you do have that parent. And I'm going to say just that, because it's usually one, not saying that you are that parent, but you have vi a valid uh complaint and you did it the right way and saying that oh here's um another black angry parent no you didn't come angry no <laughs> it's, it's like let, let's let's be professional let's have the conversation the conversation that's over the entire world let's be real you know what i mean let's have this conversation and let's see what the issue could possibly be and what's the solution well we know what the issue is but what's the solution to this um so again uh, for teachers out there, um, if you are like the drama teacher, send it out to the parents, seventh and eighth grade, ninth grade, let them vote. We voted. We had three plays. I'll never forget my senior year was uh, Murder Takes a Holiday. Mm -hmm. Now, you be like, Murder Takes a Holiday in the school? Oh, my gosh. I got a whole murder. Yeah, I got killed. But guess <laughs> what? I, I got to the end of the play before I got killed. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> it wasn't at the beginning. But it was right. like, you know. <laughs> It was like right. murder takes a holiday and now you can't even have like those type plays because the whole right. cancel culture thing mm -hmm. because it was a murder we did we performed it at the school and we performed it that evening it was amazing and it was different from the uh, air quotes from our listening audience the norm but it was right. good look i was all yeah. into it it was a good play i was, I was like Ooh. and i think that the vote needs to actually be had a vote instead of saying, okay, and just appointing, this is the play that we're gonna do, and here you go. And you are right, even in any type of entertainment, um, in radio, you have, what is your target audience? Just like mm -hmm. you stated, Danielle, what is your target audience? You want them to appreciate it. Do you really want people to be mad? I'd be wondering because they play Roots around Christmas every year. I refuse to watch it. You wanna piss me off for the holidays? 
You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I'm like, I'm not watching that. But it makes you wonder, what are your intentions? And that's pretty much it overall. What's your intention? Well, especially in a school with 90, I, I, I said, if you have 10 children and mm-hmm. you choose something for the family to do that upsets nine of them. <laughs> what do you we do? ain't eating liver. We serve the <laughs> liver. None of them don't what, like liver. <laughs> what, 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 what do you do? do? Do you just make the nine suffer for the one? Or do you try to come to a compromise? Like you're talking about a school with 90% enrollment of minorities. Why and, and okay, whatever. Choose the play. It's great. I love it. Put black shirts on one group of kids and put white shirts on the other ones. Nothing's get, lost. So we, we just say to get the point across, right? I mean, if, if that's what you focus on is getting the race point across. I mean, the, you know what I mean? Because like I said, there were several different ways they could have did it. Schools around the country are doing it different ways and just choosing di- uh, di- a different group of differences, you know, because it's all about inclusion. Mm-hmm. That's and, even a, and even a licensing agency, again, the licensing agency encourages you to be creative. And it specifically states on the website, none of these roles are specific to race. So how do you choose to do that to kids? That's why when you say the attend mail, I re- you know, I'd hate to say we not done, but we not done because the principal is still the principal. Today. Today, exactly. <laughs> Today, because I know if I was the president and you didn't let me know, oh. I mean, that line of action then alone to me is worthy of a um a a, 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 a a reassignment. <laughs> there you go. A All right, yeah, yeah, we're gonna let you go. We gotta get into these shop topics, okay? Unless you want to okay. hang out, totally up to okay. you. Okay. All, All right. right, I'm gonna hang out. Oh, okay. All right. Oh. So we know about uh, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin, that was the one who actually um accidentally killed the cinematographer on his movie. Well, he did an interview and now he too is having people troll his family, calling him a killer. And on the interview, I did see remorse, but there, he didn't, he said that he wasn't responsible for her, for her death. Now, sometime when it first happened, when it first happened, I had my thoughts because with the union, back to acting, then, <laughs> mm-hmm. with the mm-hmm. union, the union felt like they needed more hands, they needed more help. They walked out, went to lunch. I had my own thoughts and I was like, mm, somebody sabotaged that. And she actually was the victim. Do you think that Alec Baldwin is a victim also? Or, and do you think that he's held responsible? He should be held responsible. I think he needs to be held responsible because from my understanding, he's the part of the production, yes. one of the producers. And so basically the thing, the thing I've heard a lot of different things like other people, but the thing that I've heard that made the most sense to me is that um, they were being cheap. They hired an armory based on nepotism, not experience, which would require more money to be paid to, for, to, the, to the armor. And then uh, who hired the armor, the, the producers. And they were more worried about their budget instead of safety. And that's why you had multiple people walk, walk out. out that multiple people leave production of the film because they felt like they were cutting too many corners and trying to be too cheap and too irresponsible. So I think not that he is at fault for pulling the trigger. He's at fault as a producer and being cheap and not hiring a qualified person to watch over those those weapons. Okay. Danielle, do you think that he should have checked to see if it was a real bullet or a blank? Because no real one's supposed to be there. Well, first of all, that's what I was going to say. I am confused to how real bullets get on set, period. Like, and that what, was another what, what oversight. That was another what oversight the of the armor. Well, I'm just going, what is the need of a real bullet? For me, I think that the solution to all that is that the guns that are going to be used for movies should be produced in a completely different environment. 
It shouldn't even be the same guns that are produced, that are released to the public for hunting or whatever it is they use guns for. You can manufacture those in a completely different environment so that they are never even able, and you can produce them in a fashion where they're never even able to be used to actually shoot someone. For me, that was the, like, how did a real bullet get on set? (laughs) And a lot of people had that question. And so normally, so what I've learned is that there's no such thing as a prop gun and all the prop guns are real guns and they're supposed to use the blanks. And you can still be injured by a blank bullet you know, even though it's a blank, like you can, you can still get really hurt by that. Um, and that they had real guns on set because the armorer and some other people want to go shooting, um, like in between takes or whatever. Um, and that's why there was real, real bullets on set. It was just, like I said, it, from what I've learned about this situation, there was multiple failures by multiple people. And it really, to me, boiled down to them being cheap and not wanting to hire people who are experienced, who are knowledgeable, and who take their job seriously. But yeah, I don't think I don't think he's a killer, but I think he's. De- I mean, I think he's definitely responsible in some way. You know, I. I mean, as the producer, it's, you're over everybody. Everybody's safety is your responsibility. So if you have to check, check, and double check, that's what you do. Okay. All right, let's move on to the Michigan Oxford High School shooter. The young man where, let me put this up. I don't, the young man, uh, Crumley, kills several students and injure several students. Now, they're charging his parents with uh, involuntary manslaughter because they said that they purchased, um, the father purchased the gun like a week prior, I wanna say 26th or 28th, for the young man for his birthday. Um, A teacher actually brought to the attention of the principal, and this is, well, actually this is not even alleged, but I'm paraphrasing. And they spoke to the child, spoke to the shooter, the killer, I'm just gonna say it, they spoke to the killer. And then they had a meeting with the parents and the shooter and he le- hours before he leaves and comes back and they found the text on his phone where the mom texts him and said you have to learn not to get caught because they found out that he was looking up ammo and now kudos, kudos to the teacher that saw an issue and reported it yes to my understanding i guess the police you know security at the school had no idea of that because they're just of uh, those, you know, concerns that the teacher had because she took it to administration and administration, did, administration didn't convey that information to the security. So they weren't on it, you know what I mean? To kind of watch that child and say, okay, wait a minute, something's going on. But they, um, the parents is on them. They got a manhunt. They calling them. Well, what they, oh yeah, they are uh, on a run. I think that they were mm-hmm. actually out getting an attorney to come back because they are holding the parents accountable now. What's your thoughts on holding the parents accountable for what these, you know, these children are doing with these school shootings? They absolutely are accountable. They bought the gun. And then from my understanding, when the school tried to send him home, they said, no, let him stay in school for the rest of the day. And that's not that. If that was my child, we would be leaving directly on our way to get some help. What parent says, well, let him just finish the day. That, that, Gosh, me and Amber looking at each other like, okay, I, I, I want to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. <laughs> just, 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 let, just let him finish the day. You know, that just does not sit well with me. And to add to what you said, Mel, they've been spotted. So they ain't out getting a lawyer. They was caught on video camera in Detroit sightseeing. (laughs) So they ain't out getting no attorney. I I, I just, you know, and then, you know, it to even go and for me, listen, my husband has his CCW. Okay. I'm, I am not against guns per se okay but for me who buys a child a gun 
hunters, they bought it. They bought it, little ones, hunters. Uh, I, I mean, mean guns I when they really little, when they go. Guess hunting. what? I will repeat it. Who buys a child a gun? <laughs> Why are you buying a gun? You already know. A gun. Because, see, I can buy me a gun that's mine and my child still use it. And so who buys a gun for a child? Like he specifically said to the people where he bought the gun, this is his Christmas gift. That's what it was, not birthday, Christmas yeah, this is his Christmas gift. How are there not, I mean, we always talk about the gun lobbying laws. How are there not laws that specifically state you can't buy your kid a gun? <laughs> like, I don't understand that because it doesn't stop them from competing. It doesn't stop them from hunting. It doesn't stop anything except for this gun being in the hands of somebody who is not mentally and emotionally prepared to handle everything life is throwing at them. Well, so he then, had a like, problem. Exactly. Remember, he wanted to die. He wrote that and talk about blood everywhere. And he, he, I think he put something, I don't know which outlet he put it on where he said he can't get these thoughts out of his head. Um, that's somebody that don't need one. Go ahead, Amber. Okay, so as far as um, wanting to keep the kid in the class, because smell you, you already know, um, that's actually really common because a lot of these kids, you have to understand, these parents have seen these behaviors, so we call them behaviors, um, so they're not surprised, and they're and and it really is. I think a lot of it is um, they're in denial about their child having issues. They are just trying to keep their head above water financially, just keep a house. They have other children to take care of also, so they can't just give all their attention to the one child. And then um, a lot of these children that have repeated behavioral issues, um, they're, they're having to leave work constantly to come get their kid out of school. So it just, it gets old, it gets tired um, of having to come pick your kid up. Um, and that that's my from my observations. And then as far as the security not being aware that this child was uh, a concern, poor communication from the administration's part, poor, poor communication. Um, and yeah, um, I, I think from an administrative standpoint, you you need to be communicating to your front office staff. Hello. And your security about particular students that where there's particular, you know, uh, physical safety concerns, physical safety concerns that should be, that should be communicated to the people that are monitoring the entrances of the school building. Um, and I definitely think the parents are at fault. Definitely. I think, um, they don't seem like they're hunters. I think they were on the run also personally. Um, and then when they made the news then they were like, no, we're, we're not running like, mm, okay. Uh, but yeah, I think they're definitely at fault. It's just, it's just such a tragedy. Um, and I think these men, the mental health, uh, we, you know, we, we have to do better by our young people as far as these mental health issues that are cropping up and then taking it seriously. You know, uh, I, if I, I feel like it could, it could have been avoided. Yeah. Especially, I think the parent did know when she said, don't do it. Right. Don't she do it, Ethan. I think that was his these name, parents right? be knowing either. Okay. I, don't, I wasn't talking to you about it, but either these parents know there's something wrong with their child. They sense it. You know, you got the maternal instinct or something's wrong with the parents. Cause a lot of these issues are genetic. Let's keep it a hundred. The, the, the parent is off to begin with. So <laughs> can we be surprised <laughs> that the kid's off? <laughs> so, yeah, she knew. They knew. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to a uh, Florida entertainer, dancer. Yeah, strippers and entertainers. I want to I want to give everybody a proper term. She um, left her three year old daughter in the car while she was at work at 2 a.m. She left her in the parking lot. She was at work and the name of her um, employment is called Vegas Cabaret. So she was on the pole while her child was in the car at three years old. And I'm gonna tell y'all, she had a, um, a Toyota with tinted windows. So I guess, and she had stuff back there when the police came, she had toys back there to entertain the little child. The window was down for ventilation. That baby got out of the car, three years old and was walking the parking lot. Now- I'm not surprised. Now, and 
her being an entertainer, that's her employment. How, how, so no shade on that. How is it that people are still leaving their children in the car? And like I said, people are trying to pay their bills. What do you do if you don't have child proper child care? She should have had that baby strapped onto her back on the pole. Like, real talk. Like, my baby's coming in with me. If I can't bring the baby in, if, if she can't sit behind the bar, I'm going to have to leave. So, and just in... Um, or in the back room. Or in the back room with whoever back room, come up in. in the dressing room, something. She didn't have to leave the baby in the car. So, I, I don't support that. But as far as forgetting the baby... For, now, there's different leaving the baby and forgetting the baby. Uh, you, you know, Ethan, my, my child, I forgot him in the car once when he was a baby. What? And what? it's actually, it happens a lot more often than people want to acknowledge. And this how? is for how? the audience. Tell me. Tell me when how? you're a new parent, when you're, okay, so it's, uh, it's about patterning and conditioning in your brain. And you're not, and if you're a new parent with a new baby, your whole schedule changes. And so if you're right, especially if you're stressed out, if you're rushing, it's easy to, if you forget the babies back there and you're just going, cause you're used to not even having kids, right? So I, I learned that um, when you're in that position, when you have a, a baby, a newborn baby, put your purse because you've had your purse since you were 12 years old. You've had a baby for, for two months. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you're used to not forgetting your purse. That's more ingrained in your pattern and your, in your pattern throughout the day. Put your purse or your wallet in the car seat because you're more likely to remember your purse or your wallet than the baby because you've every uh, everywhere you go ever since you hit puberty for most women you're supposed to keep your you're supposed to have your purse on you don't ever forget your purse right and so that will help you um when you're rushing and, and getting busy with life so I understand as a parent like things happen that's just you know a tip so, for other so people so when did you remember he was in the car I, I'm, I'm just, maybe I'm like wondering. 20 minutes like 20 minutes I was running late to work you know he was fine but it, it really does happen and, and it'd be accidental and so that's what I learned and I think it makes a lot of sense because it is about you know just your brain patterns and just mm -hmm. you know uh what you're accustomed to doing what becomes uh automatic where you don't even think about it no more you know Mel it must happen because when I got my new car it, it has a it. thing. It says it. Like when I turn my car off, this big thing says, bing, 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 bing. And it says, please check the rear for a child. So oh, don't say a child. Safety. Oh. Yeah. So it's a safety feature for a car. So it must happen. It happens a lot. A lot. Exactly. Yeah. It, happens it must a happen lot. often. Yeah. I, 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 was, I was like, what? when I first what got it, I was like, why does it say that? <laughs> like, Here's but, what's interesting about that because we see it and we've covered a few stories where the one man went to work and the child passed away in the car and he totally forgot. And my thoughts were he probably never dropped the baby off at the babysitter. That's right, what it's I not thought. A habit. Right. It's not and a habit. I do keep my purse in the back seat. I keep my purse in the back seat, just I just automatically do it and not for that reason. But I, I was just curious, like, wow. And I wanted to hear more. That's why I kind of was like, well, when did you remember? Because, you know, somebody that you actually know, because I didn't know anybody. I'm like, how do you forget a baby? How do you forget a baby? And now I know. So thank you for the clarity. And like Danielle said, it is. It says check the rear. Mine don't say for children, but that's deep. Do you have a truck? Yes. So I yes. want to like. I have, I have the new Traverse. And okay. it, it lights up my dashboard and it says, please check the rear for a child. That's good. Th that, that's a good thing. Wow. See, thank you. Listen, I, I thought it was odd though, because I was like, you was going, oh, lady, gee. <laughs> like, why would they put that on a car? <laughs> you know, but clearly it happens a lot. So, yeah. okay. <laughs> now let's move on happen. to the Cuomo brothers, Chris mm. and Andrew. So we know the story of Andrew, so I'm not going to go back and revisit that. But now they have uh, suspended indefinitely Chris for giving his brother advice. What's your thoughts on that? He only had nothing to do with it. Mm -mm. I mean, it's just uh, like nepotism is everywhere. Why can't I give my 
brother advice. Why can't I make a phone call in the best interest of my brother? That doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with what he did, but why? I, just because my brother does something wrong doesn't mean he's not my brother. I still want the best possible outcome for him. And because he is my family, which you think is the best possible outcome for him, a complete and total stranger or the authorities, it's going to be different for what I think. So why can't I use my resources to help my brother? I would help use them to help my mother. I would use them to help my sister. Like I would use them to help my child. Why can't I use them to help my, my, my brother? Go ahead, Amber. What's your thoughts um, on that? I think, yeah, like we already talked about nepotism. I think it's low key a witch hunt because it is nepotism is everywhere. But that actually reminds me of like Nicki Minaj and her husband. And it's just like, somebody you gotta let people fall, you know? And um, now now his his bag is messed up. Now he's getting dragged into the mud um, because he, he, he wanted to do that. But yeah, I think, you know, sometimes you just gotta keep your mouth shut, I guess. As a yeah. brother though, cause I know like, I have friends that are attorneys, friends that, or doctors, you know what I mean? And if you if you have a question, what's my problem? Hey, ba 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 ba, bam. And just like Danielle said, okay, he did that. So you want me to cancel my brother too? Like I need to be on the bandwagon. This whole cancel culture thing is just team too much. But I'm on the bandwagon because I, off the clock, chose to call relationships that I have made at my place of employment chose to call and say, hey, ba 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 ba, and I give advice, uh, you get rid of me? And he didn't do it. So now you got him guilty, you just gonna clump them together and be like, okay, you guilty too? Cause they already got mm -hmm. him guilty before he even go before the judge. Yeah, they do, they do. So, you know, even, you know, with that situation with the females, but that's his brother. I, me personally, I, I Family first. Family first. I was about to say, you got kids. Imagine if your son said to your daughter, I ain't doing it. You got yourself in that mess and he could help her. You and as a mother would be looking at him like, like, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you would be looking at him like, you better help her. You know? We rise and we fall together. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I wonder, how did they even find out that he called him? You know they what I'm saying? And that's a good, that's a good question. I'm thinking that they probably, some text is like, hey, call me, boom, and somebody said something to somebody else. It's all hearsay. Like most of these cases are all hearsay. It's somebody mm -hmm. falling off of hearsay, which brings me um, to our other issue with that, right? She's an author. Um, what was the name of her book? Uh, the Lovely Bones. That guy that just got, what's his name? Um, Anthony Broadwater or something like that. He just got exonerated after 16 years. You know mm -hmm. what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Well, that guy just got exonerated because um, after 16 years for the rape of um, Alice Seabold, I think Alice Seabold is her name. Um, but she wrote the book, The Lovely Bones and it was, it was gonna be a movie on Netflix. And the people working on the scene saw the discrepancies from the book and the movie and said, this does not sound right. That woman lied. She lied and said he raped her. 16 years, he cannot get back. Right. So she right. lied and said he raped her and it was untrue. It was untrue. That's, That's why I'm awful. sitting here like, so it's, it's on hearsay. Yeah. That was, right. Well, I mean, America has a long history that I really think the solution is to uh, people need to be brought up on criminal charges for lying. Yeah. If you're, if you falsely accuse someone of rape, you need to, you need to be brought up on charges. You need to be in jail because that's very serious. And it's also diminishing actual rape victims. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like it's just bad all around. Um, it's nothing new and um, they're not, there's a lack of accountability with a certain group of women who have a history of doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and the only, yeah. the only way it's going to change is if there's consequences. Now you're right. 
you're right. Um, my thoughts are, yes, they need to do time and be brought up on charges. I believe that wholeheartedly. Like the one, uh, Emmett Till, come on. Right. That, you know, and it's like, so now you tell the truth, but this you, young man- purpose for that? Yeah. <laughs> She think that's not keep her from going to hell. That's what that is. That's probably, no, you, like, all that time? Like, get out of here. Mm -hmm. And I think that he needs to benefit. That, you know yeah. what I mean? You wrote this movie on a lie or add to the movie. Show the end how she lied. And he was exonerated. Right. And what happened to her? Put her, right. lock her up. When somebody actually goes and it's based off of this and you lie, and you're right, Amber, it messes up the true rape victims because they probably won't come forward anymore mm -hmm. and say this occurred. You know what I mean? This situation happened to me. But come on, that lady lied 16 years. How do you get that back? How do you, you get don't. six minutes? You put that up for six minutes, I'm gonna have a problem. Six minutes, I'm gonna, come on. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Six 16 years in there, and you, you do have the, um, some corrections officers who are ignorant, and then you have those who understand that we are all one decision away from being in your position. Yeah. And that's the truth. We could turn the wrong way. We can go in the store at the wrong time, you know, happen to go get gas, and then something, you know, crazy happens, and then they sit there and they go for you. They're like, okay, you. Um, it was this person. Come on. Just like, um, I can't remember where that was, but it's new where the guy called the police because somebody stole his car. And I saw that. I, I saw that. that. I didn't hear and that. And I was didn't just see like. A, a guy called the police because his car was mm -hmm. stolen. They arrest the one who called, whose car was stolen. And was they his, arrested him. They didn't was just his car. Him. He was apprehended, handcuffed in the police car and it was his car. And they, they want to <laughs> see ID. He was like, it's in my car. That's stolen. <laughs> just team what? too much. Did you see the- Team uh, too much, right. <laughs> the um, Arizona, where in Arizona, yeah, in Arizona, you guys got to check this out. New, it was a guy, in a, uh, the cop killed a 61 year old customer in a parking lot because he told him don't go in the store. The guy, he rolls, he got an automated wheelchair. The police, killed him on his way going into the store. Here's the problem. He shot nine rounds to a man in an automatic wheelchair going into a Lowe's. So why, why, did he have a gun? Did he have, I mean, what, what are like bazookas? They, they, they said, the they said I mean, he had a knife and was attacking someone, but the body cam, they released the body cam on Monday. Now, yeah, I believe it was Monday. Um, he had a knife and but a knife and a gun and you got two police officers and I believe the one shot twice and the other one hit seven times but he in a chair and he's rolling away so his would the, if he can't run that would be rolling away you know what I'm saying you shoot this man like like come on how much can he do his back was shot was turned the man <laughs> The man rolled out the wheelchair onto the ground dead. 61. Wow. No, I think it goes back to the training. Wow. It's not the um, last resort. It's the first resort. Lethal force is being used as the first resort. Yeah, they just, it is. They could have pushed him over. Come on now. They could have just pushed his chair over. They could have. Because where was he going to go? Where was he going to go? No, so cool. Yeah, they could have apprehended him, just tipped him, boom. You know, I mean, but that like, just goes to show to our society, though, too. They killed that man. Yes. They killed that man. Go on this little go. boy didn't kill all these folk at this Michigan school. Oh. He walked out the school with the gun in his hand, and they peacefully apprehended him. And right. you killed the man in the doggone wheelchair. And you killed the man in the doggone wheelchair. Took his now, I, took if his he battery. had a gun, took his battery out. <laughs> if he, if he, had a gun, right. he could have he shot them if he had a gun but if he only had a knife that was that was no excuse so i feel like okay and just like with kyle rittenhouse when i was like well he only shot him one time when you got police out here pulling eight bullets unloading the whole clip into somebody you know what i'm saying the police aren't even using restraint mm -mm. 
True. And you know what? Speaking of Rittenhouse, that's what's nutty. So they didn't charge his mother. No. Who, and who I was them all. That, but I said that ain't what we talking about. So I leave him out of it. Uh, but you know, but you know it. They said she didn't give him the gun. That somebody, his family members, after they crossed the state lines, gave him the gun, not his mom. Oh, okay. She just dropped him off to peacefully just protest. Him off. Mm-hmm. I guess. I don't know. He, he must have got on her nerves that she just dropped him off. It was like gone. Gone. I was gonna say, cause the cause I my position was I said my kids bring dumb ideas to me all the time and I tell them we ain't doing that. Right. That, that, that lady, that lady, because I it, I thought that was his gun. So how did somebody else bring him his gun across state lines? That, that was, was his his that was Kyle's gun. It was? Yes, that was That's Kyle's what they said. gun. That was mm. his gun. So I said, he went to his mama, said what he said, and she said, grab the big one, let's go. She responsible. Mm. Listen, she responsible for dropping that 17 year old off over there with all that drama. Yeah. Right. Uh, like I said, yeah. or, or he got on her nerves so much, she like, Lord, take him. Go on, I'm gonna drop you off. <laughs> you know, you just don't know. But she's not responsible for him. But these parents are responsible for the school shooting. Now, I, I will say this. If you hold parents accountable, although they do what they do, because clearly he wasn't listening to his parents. And for her to send that text, talk about some Ethan, don't do it. I really felt like they had no control over him. So he really shouldn't have got a gun. He really well, my, shouldn't have got a gun. My I'm thing like, he doing what he want to do. Absolutely. My thing was this, if I look and I see my gun missing and my kid is school, my first thought ain't to text her and go, yeah, yeah, don't do it. What a father they, called 911. Well, well right. but that's what right. I'm saying. They text that little boy that and the father called 911 because they had already knew what he was capable of. That's so right. for me, they right. responsible. He, you know what he was capable of, and you didn't get him no help, and you didn't make the school aware of what he was responsible, what he was capable of. So he responsible. They just well, trying to get somebody to take their oh, child. Go oh, ahead, Amber. I watched a very a documentary. I forgot, but it was a, the parents of the one kid who shot the theater up. Okay. And once you dig into their history, those parents had no control over him, and it really highlighted the inadequacy of the mental health um mental health care in america but they knew since he was little something was wrong with him and that he was in and out of institutions he was in and out of schools he was in and out the hospitals he was on different medications they he had threatened them they were they was afraid he was gonna hurt them so it's just like you can be a parent and be in a real difficult situation i understand i can only imagine how hard that must be to have a child that you know has issues like that but I think that for them to get him a gun, oh no, no, that's like you the worst for that. You have completely fault. irresponsible. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, let's move on. Let's talk about wait, good news, good news, lovely people. Stacey Abrams is running for governor again in 2022. So okay. Put it out there. Do it up. I think she might get it this time. I wanted to let me out that. I'm, I'm excited for her. Come on, Stacey <laughs> Abrams. Right, um, did you know that there's a petition out uh, that people are signing for Will and Jada to please stop telling all their business? <laughs> can, can I sign it? Can I, can I, can I sign it? You, yeah, you can sign it because over 6,000 people done signed it. <laughs> what? what? I'm confused. Oh, what? they done with will and jada like you know you have like i have will here i do jada here you know mm -hmm. you should get some of my nerves anyway i ain't never liked that but mm -hmm. will like i had him like come on you are like the box office slammer of for the fourth of july like right. you hold him to a higher standard i don't want to know that you throw up when you release like that's that's what about now See, that's, that's yeah, I, I, now. I read the headline. I read the headline. It didn't make sense. Um, I feel like that's just uh guilt that manifestation of a guilty conscience, basically. And so I think when you're talking about Jada, I'm like, he's not innocent neither. See, that was a reflex 
because of his previous actions and how he was choosing to carry himself, you know, when he was on the come up. Uh, but yeah, I won't. Let, I let me keep that. him there. <laughs> let, let me keep him on the come up. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. <laughs> I just want to see y'all acting. I don't want to know I'm what happened. I'm going to have to Google this. I ain't seen that. I'm going to have to Google that, this. That's a serious cleanup. Clean up in aisle seven. That's a serious cleanup. That's a serious <laughs> cleanup. Like, I'm sitting there like, I don't want to know all of this. Like, why? And then right. they have children now. So now they know their father throwing up or just everything. Just, mm -mm. you know? Mm -mm. Well, I don't think a lot of people start have been looking at them for years as to how they are choosing to parent their children so it's really not that oh, so we knew something was weird <laughs> yeah yeah come on now come on now all right real quick let's address this this modern anti-racism now john mccorder he's an author of woke racism and he's saying that the modern anti-racism what we're dealing with right now it won't work now this is what this is. These are examples of what he's saying that will not work. Making whites feel guilty about white privilege. He said it's not going to work. Do you agree or disagree? Making them feel guilty about it work about, as in what? Asking, their... Making them curb the behavior or change some things? No, I don't think that's going to make them change anything because it's all about their perception and they don't feel like anything's wrong with white privilege. I mean, it's, it's, it's nepotism. So, so do you think that, um, trying to make them feel guilty of it, mm -hmm. do you think the people that feel guilty of it? it do you, I think, do you that's think that's effective? No. So, okay. No. Go ahead, Amber. What's your thoughts? I think that's as, as a member of a minority group, that is, you're still putting, you're still putting yourself in a place of subjugation. We, we are submitting ourselves to their feelings and we need to change our position and our situation by changing their emotions. Their emotions should be irrelevant Yeah. to our situation. Like how they feel about yeah. it is irrelevant. Good point. So Good point. We, we don't need for them to feel guilty. You know what I'm saying? Like we need equality uh, and access to resources. So mm -hmm. the whole let's intentionally or let's try to make white people feel guilty is still uplifting white people and making it them and their emotions a mechanism to our equality. Mm -hmm. Now Condoleezza Rice said on The View, she was saying we need to express ourselves without being rude to white people, without making them feel bad. No, sorry. But listen no. here, I was like, I can't <laughs> click. Sorry, Whoopi. At Change your channel. I, I ain't canceling. I, I just change your channel. I, I failed. When you, when you speak the truth, <laughs> if you're talking about history and you're stating facts like the sun is hot, if you're offended that the sun is hot, I can't help you. Yes. If we're going to sit here and talk about slavery and the things that were done in this country by your community, that's what happened. Like, mm -hmm. uh, you're, you, I'm, you, no, no. See, and that's what I'm talking about. It's this. I need a bell, but this, but, this cone mindset, this cool, this cone shit. Yes. You know? <laughs> yes. But, but again, it goes back to the conditioning. It goes well, back to the conditioning. So we have to change it at the low, at, at when they, this big, we have to change it at that level. Exactly. And for all of us who have been fortunate enough to be this level and go, our light bulb came on and we get it now. We are charged with the responsibility that when we see it, we call that thing out. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me let you guys know. I say get the book. You know, definitely get the book. Um, it's called Woke Racism by John McWhorter and that's M-C-W-H-O-R-T-E-R. -E He's the author of Woke Racism. I really encourage you guys to read it and Let's shop talk about it. You know what I mean? Tell me your thoughts. He was also, um, the other example that was used was like, if you don't date, if you don't date black people, you consider race, racist. I think it's bull crap, you know, just trying to put that on somebody. Or if I don't date somebody white, I'm racist. What, what happened to personal preference? Right. You know, and to me, I have to be honest, I understand, um, you know, protesting, but understand there's a difference between protesting and bullying. Yeah. And for some unknown reason, even with, you know, social media, you know, it's a great outlet, but some people are using it 
for bullying. Oh, you don't agree with what I'm saying because believe it or not, cancel culture is bullying. Yeah. You don't agree with what I agree with and you're wrong and I'm right and we're not allowed to have differences. We're going to cancel right. you. That's right. bullying. That's a form of yeah. bullying. It's like, let's, let us have our own thoughts. Let us have our own preference. It is totally okay to be different. Mm-hmm. Yeah, my, my motto, it's okay to be you. Mm-hmm. You be who you are. Let me be who I am. And we can agree to disagree and move on and still wave. Right. But just because, go ahead. Um, so I, I agree that if people are allowed to have preferences, obviously, you know me, Mel, but I'm not going to sit here and say that racism and, and institutionalized racism in the history of the habit doesn't um, play into people's dating choices. So I think there, there is a valid argument to that. I think just on a human level, most people are attracted to their own kind um, and to their own features. And that that's not always the case. And I feel like there's reasons as to why that's not the case, because as far as like the human, the human mind, normally people are attracted to people that look like themselves. Um, but yeah, I definitely think that you should get what, do what you feel is best for you and be with whoever you feel is best, is the best partner for you. We gonna have to talk, look, we gonna have to talk about that, ma'am. We gonna have to do that. Dating outside of your race and the fuck. Now, I'm gonna be honest. I haven't, well, I'll take that back. It's only one non-melanated white dude that I would date. Oh I've seen him. Cause I'm, I'm, being, I'm just not attracted, but it's only one. And he married to Denise off the hooks, the books. That's right. You better know it. <laughs> What's his name? The, the one to play Jason, off? Jason Momoa. Oh, <laughs> yes, yes. yes he's Jason fine. Momoa. <laughs> no yes. well, I don't know what he is. He is, but, but yeah, yeah. He is. He, he's is he white though? He's no, Pacific he's Islander. Dead. No, he's Pacific. Yeah, he's, he's, he's Samoan. He's Samoan. Samoan. He's Samoan. Yeah, he's Samoan. Well, well he's close enough. I date him though. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. I don't care how much money you had, and they'd be like, oh, well, they got, I have to be attracted to you. I have right. to be attracted to you. I'm right. not attracted to the sloppy dude, so get out of here. I don't care how much money you have. You could take your money. You could give me a box and we'll decorate it real nice. You ha- I have to be physically attracted to you. Call me shallow. You got a nice personality and I'm not physically attracted to you. We could be good friends. That's right. Hey. Oh, I'm, okay. So this is, this could be a whole nother shop talk conversation, but that's, that's that nice guy mindset. There are men who think a woman is obligated to be attracted to them because they're quote unquote nice, but it's really just manipulation yes. and gaslighting and it, that is a mindset that a lot of these quote-unquote nice guys well I'm nice so you're supposed mm-hmm. to no that's not how it works people are not obligated to like you because you're nice yeah you could be nice and we could be cool I might have a nice friend for you right <laughs> <laughs> how about that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, all right, let me go ahead. I'm gonna uh, we're gonna finish. Uh, we gotta have another round table. We got the evidence <laughs> now. Hey, hey. Um, the Delta variant right now, I want to let you guys know the Delta variant is 99.9. This is Mel's Medical Moments. I'm not gonna do the music intro because we gotta hurry up and get off here. Um, the Delta variant is 99.9% of COVID cases right now, however, already uh, in five states, what is it called? Omicron, yeah. The Omicron variant is in five states in the U.S. And I'm, a, I'm just going to put this out here. They can be mad at me, the COVID police and all of them, all they want. Usually when you hear about it and they be like, oh, we got one case because they, they were talking about in Hawaii. And that person who came back positive for it said they weren't even out of the state. Once it's released to us, it's already here. Mm-hmm. So what I ask for my lovely people and listeners to do is just continue, continue wearing your face covering. Yes. Please yes. do. Please yes. 
do. It was yes. something, even like the flu. You remember your grandmother be like, uh-uh, put that scarf over your nose. That's right. That's right. Yes. You know, because you want to get sick, cover it up before you went out there in that cold. Same thing, viruses. And let me say this to my lovely people. Viruses has to take, it, it has to go through what it has to go through. You okay? Treat the symptoms. Treat the symptoms. Treat the symptoms. Please treat the symptoms. Um, and I said that again on purpose. And one more time, treat the symptoms. When you get to the ER and get to the hospital, like with little babies, they come in be like, oh, they have a fever. I didn't give them anything because I wanted you to see. I didn't know if you'll believe me. We believe you. Right. We That's believe right. you. Over 20 years in the game. Listen, we believe you. Treat right. the symptoms. You don't have to come into the ER. You don't have to come to the hospital to talk about someone got a tip of 102. Treat it. Treat your symptoms. And then tell us, we believe what you say. We totally believe what you say, okay? It's subjective. That's why we ask you those questions. Tell us, tell us, don't feel like you're bombarding us with this and we don't believe you. We believe everything that come out of your mouth. And that's the truth because that is from you. And you are your best advocate. And if you know somebody who's dealing with something and they feel sick and they don't know for sure and they haven't been tested, uh, the library do um, have free testing. Some libraries, so check it, you know, COVID tests, so go there, okay? <laughs> Before they spike the price up again. You can get free testing uh, and, and test yourself at home. If you think you may have something, treat the symptoms. Your baby coughing, check and see if your baby has a fever. And I'm saying, when I say babies, anybody under 18, okay? Or you could be under 21. If you still live at home, that's your baby. Mm -hmm. Treat the symptoms, please. Don't just let somebody go lay down. That used to be the answer. Back with our grandparents. Go lay down, go lay down. Listen. <laughs> You need your rest, but treat the symptoms if they are showing them and treat it as if it is COVID. Have them, you know, in a room, isolated. Just please, please, please take care of yourself. I love everybody for listening, all right? And today's <laughs> footnote is the model. It's okay to be okay. you. And remember, there is a difference between cancel culture and bullying. There's a difference. Okay, and you got to watch. It's the slippery slope because some of you guys are, well, cancel culture. Some of those people do be like bullying and trolling people. And just as uh, Danielle standing up for something. And then now you have some people that try to call and bully say, okay, you know, you're done. Get out of here. Get out of here. Abuse is abuse. They have emotional abuse, verbal abuse. It may not be physical, but that stuff is real. And it does take a toll and it gets heavy. Okay, so let's just love on one another. and. I just have to say, so many people that are just going, treat the symptoms. Y'all heard me again. Treat the symptoms. Don't sit there. Don't wait. Treat the symptoms. Drink plenty of fluid, please. Water. Remember, sugar decreases your immune system, so stay away from the sugar products. If you want to drink tea, drink tea. Uh, coffee. Coffee with the sweetener, and I am that person that put all that caramel stuff in there. It decreases your immune system, so you want to like steer clear of those type things, okay? Especially if you're feeling down. And yes, you can catch it again. You have antibodies in your system. If you had COVID, you can catch it again. Please just use your, you know, use your face coverings, your mask, whatever you have, protect yourself. And if you don't want to protect yourself, protect other people. All right, right, lovely people, that is my time. I thoroughly enjoyed you as I do each and every single Saturday. Like us on all socials at Shop Talk with Mel. Um, and you can tune in in case you're not on Facebook and you know, they might, be mad because I gave that information out. So they might take me off, but y'all catch me on YouTube because I'll be on there live as well. Okay. <laughs> so if y'all don't see me live on dog on Facebook, I'm in the dog. Look, I'm in Facebook jail. Go ahead and go to YouTube because your girl got you covered. All right. And on right. your favorite podcast, whatever podcast that is that you listen to, just go ahead, just type in Shop Talk with Mel or Google Shop Talk with Mel and they'll lead you in the right direction because you'll see your girl's face, okay? Thank you again, Danielle, for coming on and sharing your story. I truly appreciate it. No and problem. Great yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you. Thanks, Amber, for coming through. You always come through and give, look, the, look, the, the mediator. <laughs> look, she, she gives at the video like, okay, let's the sound judgment. So I truly appreciate you as well. Find you, embrace you. Most importantly, always, always love you. Until next week, people, shop talk right here on your, all of your podcasts. I don't even want to just say one because I'm going to miss one. All right.
Take it easy, lovely people, and have a great day on purpose. <laughs>